want you to keep in mind as I tell you this story, the person that is, the guy that's involved in this story was an atheist most of his life because he grew up around religion. He grew up around churches that would talk it, but they wouldn't walk it, right? So for a long time, he was atheist, and then he started to come to God, but he was very lukewarm, probably until this experience is what really cleaned him up. So I just want to preface this story before I tell you it. That way you have that in mind. Because I think one of my clients actually dealt with a chick that had some type of demon in her or something like that. Which after you hear the story, you'll see what I mean. But it's also, it's just weird, right? It's crazy how much once you grow with Christ, you start to see these things happen. But anyways, about a month ago, I'm sitting down on a one-on-one -on -one call with one of my clients, right? So in case you don't know, I do a private community that's for young Christians that are on Christ Focus Self-Improvement. That's one of the things I do. And then I also do mentoring on how to grow on social media, how to grow basically a personal brand. Because obviously on YouTube, I'm not very big, but like TikTok and Instagram is where most of my audience and most of my revenue comes from. And so if you ever see me mention the King's Hall and I would say it's down in the description, I'm talking about my community. But anyways, I'm on this client with this guy. He's about 32, good looking chap, right? He's a COO of two like seven figure companies. So the guy's balling. He's like, he's a cool dude. You would love him. And so we met this girl on Instagram and they were hitting it off. She was pretty. It seemed like she was spiritual and they were just vibing, right? They were connected on every level, mentally, spiritually, all this stuff. In fact, she would even quote scripture sometimes when they would have these deeper conversations and so eventually she was like hey like I should fly out there that way we can hang out and so they did they planned it out and she flew to his country and they went to hang out and so fast forward when him and I are on this call it's the day before she's supposed to get there right and he's telling me about her and how hype he is to you know finally meet this girl it seems like they're hitting it off and they have like a, a spiritual connection something more than just a physical connection right and so he was asking me about a specific piece of advice he was like do you think it's okay if I sleep with her now obviously from a Christian perspective we're like you know this is pretty obviously a no. But like I said, he's pretty new, and so I was walking him through some different scripture, and we were talking about a few different things, and so basically I got him to agree at least, like, hey, let's at least just hold off for this weekend, and I'm not gonna do it with her this weekend, right? Which isn't the best, but you know, it's better than just doing it right off the rip. And so she got there, they were hitting it off while she was flirting, they were having good talks, good connection, all that type of stuff, they were vibing really well. And then they went back to his apartment, and it started to kind of lean like it might go that way, and he was like, look, I, just, I don't wanna do that this weekend, if you're cool with that, you know, like, I just, I just want to get to know you on a deeper level. I don't want to, you know, hop into bed or anything. And when he said that and he took that off the table, it was like everything about her energy, he said, changed. Everything about her vibe changed. And she went from this loving, caring, patient kind of woman to getting, like, uh, there's no other way to say it. She was just getting pissed about the fact that he wouldn't sleep with her and eventually like, they just got into an argument about it or something like that. She was she was mad and then she just left. And the crazy part is either just through working with clients or reading different posts online or even just scrolling TikTok and Instagram, you'll see this stuff. That is not an uncommon experience that once a man says that he is celibate, once he's on semen retention, he's waiting until marriage, some women get pissed. By that. And so when we're talking about, I'm going to title this video something along the lines of the biggest red flag in like a Christian woman. This is the biggest red flag. You ready? It's easy when a woman is, you know, pretty, she's attractive, and then she wears a cross necklace. Like, oh, okay, so she's Christian. Or she's pretty and she goes to church. So, oh, okay, so she's Christian. Oh, she comes from a Christian household, right? She has a Bible verse in her bio. So, oh, so she must be Christian, right? And we try and almost justify it rather than waiting to see the fruits. And that's one of the most dangerous spots you can be as a man of God where you're trying to almost skip a step of discernment and really figuring out who someone is because I'm telling you there's a lot of men and women too this isn't like a like a hate video towards women or anything there's a lot of people who talk the Christian walk right and they emulate it and they're they're cool showing it right but there's no actual fruits to it. They still live like the world. I've said this before in a video back when I was very lukewarm. The only thing Christian about me was the fact that I wore a cross on my neck, right? The cross was something that completed my outfits, not my life. So does she actually have fruits of the spirit? And you can see this stuff, really the only physical one that you can see is maybe the way someone dresses, right? So if she went out on Halloween, I don't necessarily think that's bad, right? But it depends, like, how did she dress when she went out for Halloween, right? Because I know a lot of people, they're like, you know, Halloween's demonic or all this different stuff. I don't know, right? Never made a video on it, never really researched it, didn't care that much. What I can tell you is if she went out there dressed as, you know, something super provocative, that pretty much tells you everything you need to know. Because people... People always make jokes of like, how would your father let you go out and dress like that? It's like, how does the Holy Spirit allow you to go out and dress like that, right? So, if she dressed up in something crazy for Halloween, you can already write it off. There's... There's maturing in Christ that needs to happen there. So here's the red flag I want you to be aware of. And if it ever comes up, you run the other direction. Like just 
promise me that, that if this ever comes up, this red flag I'm about to give you, because all of what I've just been saying ties back in with it, if this ever pops up, you run the other direction. See, this is how low level worldly relationships have gotten, where it's almost like a power struggle and women almost leverage sex in the, like worldly relationships, right? And that's kind of the difference between worldly and godly relationships is the fact that once you both have committed yourselves to Christ, you're operating and you're going and you're striving for a higher goal, a higher purpose, right? And so naturally, as a man, if you go celebrate, if you go on semen retention, if you wait till marriage, you're naturally going to push away the women that are worldly for the most part, right? And for the most part, you're going to attract godly women, right? The women who actually are on the same type of timing, not the type of women who just wear the cross because it completes their outfit. And honestly, the idea of you being on retention or being celibate on, until marriage, all this different type of stuff, it's going to be attractive to a godly woman anyways, because it represents fruits. And the only reason it's going to bother a woman that you wouldn't want to do that, right, is because she doesn't actually understand the value that she has in Christ. So there's this word, I'm sure you guys remember in Genesis chapter 2, when God says it's not good for man to be alone, and so he makes Eve for Adam, right? He says, I will make a helper suitable for you, right? That's the word in Greek. I don't know if that's big enough to see. In fact, I might have to erase that. Or just, let me just write it bigger. It's E-Z-E-R, and it's not in Greek. It's the Hebrew word for it. But it pretty much means strength, but it's a specific type of strength. It's a strengthening that you can't do for yourself, right? So when he was making Eve and he says, I'm making a helper suitable for for Adam. What he's saying is the type of person who can strengthen another in a way they can't strengthen themselves. And if you want to see how significant this word is, you can go through the Old Testament and see this. God actually uses the same Ezra word to refer to himself. When David is fleeing from Saul because Saul is trying to murder him, right? And he's fleeing. David uses this same Ezra word to talk about how God is going to be the one who pulls him through this trial, through this tribulation. That's how much this word means. So then when you read verses that are talk that talk about, you know, he who finds a wife finds a good thing, takes on a whole new meaning. It takes on a whole new meaning of what it even means for women that are following Christ, right? Because there's a lot of people that view Christianity like it's saying men are first and women are second. I don't have time to go into like blood covenant stuff and how all that ties in with marriage and the church and all. I don't have time to go into all that. But that's something you should keep in mind if you're a woman watching this video is how much value you actually have in Christ. The type of words that God actually used when he was creating you. The type of image that he had in mind. The type of, because you were made in the image of God too, right? Genesis 1, 2, 6, let us make man, man. It's, and that word in the Hebrew is Adom, right? So it's not talking about just man, like the man gender. It's talking about humans, right? Man and woman. So you were made in the image of God, right? Let us make man in our image and likeness. And this is part of the image and likeness that women receive, that word Ezra. I would encourage you to research that word. And so if you can take that off the table and it makes a woman bug out, she starts tripping, she starts crashing out just because you don't want to do that with her. You're saving yourself, you're waiting, or even re-saving yourself, right? If you've already done it before, still a good thing. You're on cel or you're celibate, you're on semen retention, all that, and she begins to crash out for that. That already tells you what type of spirit is there. Because I don't even think someone who maybe doesn't even really know God, but doesn't have another spirit working on them, like someone kind of almost in the middle, I guess, if you want to say, I don't even think they would bug out about that. They'd just be like, oh, okay. It's only people who really got something, you know, borderline demonic going on that are going to be tripping out because you don't want to do that. Does that make sense? So that is the biggest red flag you could be looking for as a man of God in a Christian woman, right? Any woman who really knows God, all that type of stuff, she's going to be cool with being celibate, cool with you waiting until, and she's going to be wanting to do the same thing. The only thing is, obviously, once you guys get a little bit more comfortable around each other and like the physical touch barrier starts to break, that's when you guys are almost going to have to set boundaries and work together more to make sure you guys don't fall into it, right? Because once you start to like really get comfortable around someone, that's I, that might even be harder, to be honest. So, but that's another video for another day. But I hope this video helped you. Christ focused self-improvement is what I teach. If you want to join the King's Hall, leave that down in the description below. Soon on November 24th, I'm going to be doing a free, one. it's a 100% free webinar on how to actually conquer lust. So if you're struggling with that, all you have to do, go down below, sign up. It's 100% free. You just have to put in your name, email, and phone number. But that's just so I can send you the invite when we actually do it on the 24th. So be blessed. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.